and by day, it's no less spectacular. Hi, I'm Paul Majors from News 11. 100 years ago, St. Paul hosted its first Winter Carnival celebration. And that magnificent structure behind me, the Ice Palace, that Minnesota marvel, was built to celebrate that centennial. I'm Diana Pierce. This 1986 version of a winter fantasy continues the tradition started a century ago. And this modern day edition became a monument to a community that gave of itself to create a dream. It took thousands of volunteers and even more hours to build the icy structure. And News 11's Ken Speak says when those dedicated workers were done, they'd built the tallest ice palace on the record books. <laughs> There it was, November 1985, part of Phelan Park, where we saw a playground and picnic area. Others saw a thing of fantasy, but it took machines and construction material and people. People paid a dollar a day to qualify them for construction insurance. Skilled people, construction tradesmen, volunteers to pound the pilings into the ground to lay the rebar, the mats of reinforcing steel that make the concrete strong, to tie it all together with wire. It had to be strong to support the more than six million pounds of ice that had be laid atop it. And it took skilled construction tradesmen to pour close to a foot of concrete around the rebar and then vibrate the bubbles out of it to make it strong and float the surface smooth again to make it strong. It was cold work early on, but the volunteers, the carpenters and the iron workers, they shared the vision their work would produce. They all want to see the castle built. A lot of people are going to enjoy the castle. Kids, old folks, myself, my grandchildren, everybody. Community spirits, I said. That's what it is. That's what everybody is out here for, all the building trades. They were working quickly, trying to make up the time they'd lost to insurance problems that had delayed the construction start by more than a week. But already they had made up some of the time. We're a little bit behind schedule, but with all the pitching in, we've had uh, iron workers getting their work done in two days. We're gaining a little bit of time on our schedule. They faced problems building the ice palace. Working with ice is considerably different than working with any other materials these folks had experience with. And the saws to cut the 700-pound blocks from ice-covered Lake Phelan, the saws were one of a kind. The spuds they used to break the chunks apart. You may need a dozen or something, but you can only find two or three. Then after things began to come together, like the special conveyor to lift the blocks from the lake, then the weather turned warm. And the guys who earned a dollar a day, the cement masons and bricklayers and stone masons, they worked with their coats open in 40 degree temperatures and the ice in the palace began to melt. So the construction folk worked doubly hard at night, the second shift, when the sun wasn't around to melt their work, when the slush they used to cement the blocks together would freeze, when it was even more important to try to make progress. And then during the day, they draped white material over the sun side of the structure, hoping to keep the blocks below melting temperature. But the temperature stayed warm, so they tried spraying a carbon dioxide water mixture on the walls, a refrigerant, to preserve that which they'd spent hundreds of hours erecting. Finally, by January 22nd, it turned cold again, and the volunteers found themselves saying things they never would have expected to come from their own mouths. It's super. It's real good. This is just right. Good for the men and it's good for the blocks. The ice palace was growing quickly in late January, but by January 22nd, the day they had intended to complete the tallest ice palace in the world, they had gotten only 18 blocks high on the walls and they were feeling deadline pressure. Coming down easy. Bring her down, bring her down, bring her down. Super. By this point, folks could see form and shape. They could understand the vision of the planners, and the volunteers could begin to concentrate their efforts on the finer points, things like the head of Eros. I've never had a chance to do anything this big before, so, you know, it is fun. Uh -huh. A lot of work. I've got a sore hand, but who cares, you know? <laughs> Don Neurotter voiced the feelings of the 700 dedicated construction workers who built that ice palace. They were enthusiastic. They enjoyed the challenge. And when finally the day came that the cap was slipped onto the highest tower, when the volunteer construction workers were finished and they themselves had cameras around their necks, well, they were proud. 
they knew the reality of the words spoken at the topping off ceremony. I think what this project represents is not so much so many blocks on top of so many blocks, but the fact that a whole lot of people uh, from this whole area can come together and do something that uh, most people didn't think could be done. We finally got where we wanted. It would have been nice if they could have completed it according to the original plan, but uh, that looks pretty nice. It was kind of fun to make. But there was times where I doubt whether I was going to make it or not, <laughs> especially when the wind chill was 28 below and there's only three guys up there. And I thought, oh man, we'll never make it. <laughs> but it turned out beautiful. Look at it. Okay. Pretty as can be. It was beautiful. Nobody would argue that. And it attracted folks from miles around. But if these folks thought it was beautiful in the daytime, they were sure to be amazed after dark. After dark is when News 11's Mary Stuckey says the Winter Carnival Ice Palace came alive. At night, the palace was truly a wonder to behold. Glittering, glimmering, and full of light. This icy marvel almost didn't seem real. Fantasy land. It really does look like fantasy land. Well, it looks like castles that you see in fairy tale books, I think, don't you? It's beautiful. I've never seen that, anything like this before. And thousands of photographers wanted to remember what they'd seen. It's the lights that made the difference between night and day. 1,200 bulbs, red, blue, and green, changing colors in a five-minute sequence. Deep within the palace, a $26,000 computer center controlled the lights, lights which themselves were special. This is a ceramic coating. You see on that bulb? Uh-huh. Come on. And that's a very expensive light bulb. Indeed. $14,000 worth of lights brightened the palace. The effect? Breathtaking. It's a sight that filled the nighttime sky, and for many onlookers, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. An experience which sightseers earned, but the wait in long lines of cars leading to the palace was well worth it. I'd like to see it I again. they'd leave it up till mid-March. <laughs> Phelan never had so many people. <laughs> Even to watch the submarine races in the summer. <laughs> of course, the palace had to come down sooner, but the memories remain. Memories of a multicolored ice palace against a black Minnesota sky. Kind of looks like something out of a fairy tale. A fairy tale come to life. The beauty and splendor of the ice palace was the photographer's delight, and they came from all over, armed with gear to capture its glory. Everyone from professional photographers with the state-of-the-art equipment to amateurs with Instamatics agreed on one thing. The Ice Palace made for a picture-perfect model. Some wide angles of the whole thing lit, some time exposures to get the different colors. I came all the way from California for this. It's Was it worth it? Yeah, I think so, yes. Proper exposures, it'll come out. And the push for pictures resulted in a boom for one-hour photo stores in the Lake Phelan area. As some folks who snapped away rushed in to see what they captured on film. We brought them in today just to get these done right away so we could see if we had to go out there again. Do you have to? No, I don't think so. I am pleased. Now, getting those shots to come out right wasn't always easy, especially when it was cold, and focusing with fumbling hands made the going rough. But warm spirits and a little help from friends made the heatless hassle a whole lot of fun. And if you didn't own a camera, the newspapers in both Minneapolis and St. Paul sold posters portraying the icy wonderland in all its glory. A pictorial tribute to a fantasy come to life. Okay. Thanks. Due to safety considerations, the public was not allowed an inside view of the castle. But News 11's Janet Mason managed to get a guided tour, and she gives us a rare look inside the Minnesota Marvel. The majestic ice palace looks inviting, 
Everyone from moms and dads to toddlers want to take a peek behind these icy walls. I'd like to go in it because it's sort of neat. Sorry, for insurance reasons, spectators can't go in the palace. Since you can't personally take a tour inside the ice palace, come with us. We'll show you around. This is the courtyard, the largest room in the palace. The only other sizable room houses the sound system and the computer, which controls the 1,200 red, blue, and green lights. Our tour guide, Fred Chase, says several other chambers had to be eliminated when the palace was scaled down from its original size. At one time, was little rooms that would have been inside the towers. And over in this area here, oh, like right in here, there would have been an archway that you would have been able to walk in here and then down, down a ways and then come out down the other end. Same thing over on this side. There are several passageways that lead to dead ends, but this one took us to a small chamber at the base of one of the two towers. There's only one way in. Well, that wasn't too bad. Another small hole in the tower let us look up the shorter 76-foot icy spire. The inside of the palace is interesting, but the best view is from the outside. This certainly is one of the more magnificent ice palaces ever built, but it's not the first. News 11 Susan Weesey found that past ice palaces provided a good history lesson for the palace of today. What attracted people to the first winter carnival 100 years ago was this, a majestic ice palace 106 feet tall. Since then, the home of King Boreas Rex has at times been even more splendid. Other times, it hardly resembled a castle at all. Each time, the castle has been a source of civic pride. So says palace historian Bob Olson. With every ice palace we have built, we have shown that St. Paul can rise to the, the aspirations of, of everybody's dream to build a castle. A century ago, the ice was harvested with a handsaw, then transported by horse-drawn sleigh. Now, chainsaws are used to chisel the ice, and while this year the weather did have a hand in slowing down the construction of the ice palace, it never interfered enough to keep this castle from going down in the record books as the tallest palace in history. It topped out at 128 feet, 9 inches tall. While the ice palace of today is a modern marvel, it also produced a couple of modern headaches, mostly in the form of traffic. Thousands and thousands of cars and people flocked to Lake Phelan to get their glimpse of the fantasy-like structure. But News 11's Kevin McDowell found that most stuck in traffic said the wait was worth it. They traveled by day. They traveled by night. They traveled in the early morning hours. Didn't matter what time of day or night, the cars, the folks on foot, the little kids, the big ones, they all came to gaze in awe at the vision that was the Ice Palace. We got the whole family together. We took the Winnebago down. In all, it's estimated that over one and a half million people came to Lake Phelan to see the Ice Palace. One and a half million. Mostly, they came by car. Lines and lines of cars. Every day, every night, all night. Police estimate some 350,000 cars drove by the site while it was standing. And it seems no one, but no one, minded the wait. A wait which at times lasted several hours. We thought it didn't look busy at 5 o'clock. <laughs> How long have you been waiting in line, do you know? About an hour and a half. About an hour and a half? Yeah. Have you been out here before? No, this first time. Is it worth the wait? Or do you know yet? Uh, it looks like it might be, but we haven't been that close yet. I'm ready. I have my camera. Okay. I'm going to carry this picture for years, believe me. <laughs> And News 11's Dennis Stauffer was among the sightseers. One night, in an experiment during a newscast, he decided to show everyone how long it would take to get from the entrance of Phelan Park to the Ice Palace itself. Now, to give you a feel for just how long the wait is, well, the worst of it is behind us at this point. We're at the entrance to the park. But there's about three quarters of a mile yet to go here, and I'm going to hop in the car, and we'll touch base with you a little later in the show and let you know how I'm progressing. We're not sure just how long it'll take, but we're confident it'll take us a little while. It should give you a feel for just how much of a crowd is out here tonight. All right, Dennis. Well, you're from the New York area, so just wedge your way in there real quick. <laughs> and we'll check back later with us. A little bit later, we'll see you. <laughs> 
Paul, we have traveled about two blocks, I would say, in the past 10 minutes. I think that's about how long it's been since we last talked to you. Needless to say, things are going very slow out here. We are not even halfway from the main gate to the park to the Ice Palace. Hopefully, we'll make it by the end of news, but we'll keep you posted. Dennis, where is the uh, photographer that's taking the picture of you? He's on top of the live truck in front of me, which is sending a signal to another live truck so that you can get it back there. Is this science? Yeah. Boy, is he like, locked down, I hope? Absolutely. Underwriter Laboratories couldn't conduct this test. <laughs> I'm not sure we can. We'll see how it comes together when it's all over. Thanks, Dennis. At least you're honest, too. It's been about a half hour since we've heard from Dennis Stoffer. Let's go find out where yeah. he is right now. Dennis? We are right beside the Ice Palace. We have just arrived within the past few seconds, so it took us... Um, just under 30 minutes to get here from the gate. It's beautiful, it is well worth the trip. I came here on foot last night, and this is a much more comfortable way to travel, but it does take a little longer. It's also a little smarter than going by foot, too. <laughs> <laughs> Traveling by car a little easier. Yes. To keep the traffic moving smoothly was no small task. It took thousands of volunteer hours by police. And that was just one of the many volunteer projects by the entire community that made the Ice Palace such a success. Officers from the St. Paul Police, police reserves, and security officers put in more than 5,700 hours of volunteer work, making sure the sightseeing process went without a hitch. They patrolled around the clock, and most said the folks who came out were no problem at all. The traffic, I'm sure you know, has been really bad all the way along here. But as far as uh, disorderly people and stuff, it hasn't been too bad. Well, they just want to get a little closer to get some pictures, I guess. That's about the only problems. Okay, so they've been fairly well behaved, would you say? Yeah, not too bad. Police weren't the only ones donating time, and the volunteer effort began early on, a year before the Ice Palace eventually became reality. Skilled volunteers from trade unions were recruited, and others became part of the project as well, including companies with a vested interest in our community. A check from WUSA Channel 11 for $50,000 helped cover a last-minute insurance problem. Various construction and electric companies provided additional manpower. Individuals throughout the community were able to chip in with financial support by buying ice block certificates at $10 each. Around $160,000 was raised by the volunteers of the ice block brigade, and the ice block effort was supported by some pretty recognizable folks as well. We're working together to help build a dream. The largest ice palace in the world for the Centennial Winter Carnival. It'll be 15 stories high and built with more than 30,000 ice blocks at Lake Phelan. I'm sure my Aunt Myrtle in Miami would love one of those ice blocks. Well, wouldn't you like to win some of those prizes? You mean like the Jeep, the Mink, the Vacation, the 3,000 bucks in cash, the boat, motor, and trailer? Well, yeah, I would, yeah. Hey, the ice block certificates are up here for only 10 bucks. When the volunteers were finally able to step back and admire their work, they found they'd put together a 6,300,000-pound marvel that stood 128 feet 9 inches high. And the opening ceremonies were dedicated to those who made it happen. From the hundreds and thousands of people, some of whom you will meet shortly, who volunteered their time and effort in the construction, to the companies that donated equipment, materials, and manpower, to the police reservists and volunteers who tried to control traffic, to the people that have bought ice blocks and to all of you that have lent your moral support, this has been a community effort. The people that have been associated with Ice Palace have overcome every single obstacle put in their way. And I think we've proved to those people who just a few months ago said that you can't do that, that that's impossible. We've proved, oh yes, we can. Of course, the dedication paid off, and everyone who worked on the icy structure should be proud of their efforts. The palatial fantasy provided a backdrop for some unusual sights. As News 11's John Bachman tells us, also lots of fun experiences. For weeks, the crowds gathered to gaze, wonder, and celebrate. Did you get a picture? Yeah. Okay. This is our first visit close up to it, but we're really impressed, and I think it's great to see everybody out here, and we're really enjoying seeing the sights and the people. I feel good. 
because my aunt and my uncle Ken helped, and I would really love to go in, but I know we can't. Among the oddities, this fish iced inside one of the palace's blocks. And for sculpture, how about this tribute to all the construction workers who gave so much of their time? Special forms of transportation were available at Phelan Park, as Channel 11's Paul Douglas discovered. Uh, the Vultures have taken down. over. Paul, we need you at six. Yeah. Oh. So did Mayor George Latimer, who was flown in on board Sky 11. And the Channel 11 hot air balloon added to the festive spirit of the carnival. But the highlight of the celebration, of course, came on the night of the torchlight parade, when thousands braved the bitter cold temperatures. The Balkans arrived to overthrow King Boreas and bring on spring. And for a finale, the stunning fireworks display with the ice palace as a scenic backdrop. A winter carnival will all be proud to recall that we were there. Of course, it couldn't last forever. No, 14 days into its run as a Minnesota marvel, that crane started bringing the ice palace down. It was fun. Probably one of the funnest jobs that I've been on and it was associated with. I know there, there were people who wanted to see it up longer. Did you? Yeah, I would have liked to have seen it longer. I wish that more people could have been able to see it. A lot of people I talked to haven't been out here yet to see it, and I was kind of hoping they could do it for another week anyways, but I guess it happens. Mm -hmm. So she has to come down, she has to come down. It's probably the largest project that I've ever been involved in with that many people. I've made hundreds of friends. I miss that already. Um, I'll always be able to say that I did this with a lot of other people, but it's sad to see something this great come to an end. Well, it's kind of like a, a wake, but... Uh... I wore my blue clothes so I didn't look like one of those Vulcans, you know. Lake Phelan is back to normal now. The Ice Palace is gone. And with it, a parade of sightseers and a long line of cars. But it won't be forgotten that this lake was the scene of a piece of history, an idea that caught fire, an icy wonder that pulled a community together and warmed the hearts of hundreds of thousands of Minnesotans.
we should have left it up a couple more days or something. It was so beautiful that they finished it. It showed me, made me be proud of Minnesota. It was beautiful at night to see the lights. And, and now it's going down. So let's hope we see it again next year.